Namaste. Things should also relaxing, but they could be quite tricky to get along with. So let me share with you some tips and I can play yours beautifully so you produce that calming sound. So hold the string of the Tingsha bell using your index and your thumb fingers, such as this, yeah, and then place the middle finger just below your index finger. Good. Keeping a small gap between the top of the Tingsha bell and your middle finger. So your fingers are not touching you know, the metal part of the bell. Yeah, so the reason being, yeah, this gives you more stability. Yeah, because if you hang the bells so loosely, there's a high chance or probability that you will hit them hard and uncontrollably, and that's not good and pleasing to the ears. All right. So stability is important here. All right, next. You're just using your dominant hand in striking or touching the other bell. In my case, my left hand is my less active hand, so I, may, I will just keep you know, my left bell steady, yeah, and I will just use my right hand, the right bell, to touch the other one. such as that. Yeah, so you don't bang them together. Yeah, so you don't strike them together. Just one bell is actively doing the work. Good. And then just touch mildly. Uh, Tensha bells, when they produce the quiet sound, is actually the relaxing resonance or frequency or vibration you want to produce. You know, just enough for you to yeah, hear the sound. And if you're playing it, for example, for your students in a bigger room, so you may adjust the striking intensity. Yeah, still quiet, still gentle, but a little, apply a little bit more force. All right. Yeah. So keep the distance between the bell small. Yeah, you don't want too much momentum on striking the bell. Rather, just touch. For example, yeah, you accidentally hit them hard. It happens. Yeah, you, you won't be able to prevent that from happening. So what you do is, for example, I'll strike them hard. And the sound they produce, quite loud. So move the bells like this circle them around, move them further back, yeah, and then move them from side to side to distribute the sound <laughs> frequency. Yeah? Like that. So move. Yeah. Good. And wait. Don't strike them too soon yeah, after the repetition. So what you do is wait. Breathe through it. Until just a fraction or just a, a tiny fragment yeah, of the sound is left before you do the next one. But breathe, yeah, relax, but you're in control. Yeah, so you're, um, you're confident, but not tight and rigid and not too loose as well. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure your wrists are steady and um, you're just using actually yeah, the swinging motion normally i would use my uh, middle finger in pushing yeah, the bell like that so you don't move the hand yeah itself yeah just a mild push coming from that index finger yeah and that's enough yeah, to you know, touch the other bell gently. Right. You might chant yeah, one repetition. For example, you're chanting the Om, strike it, breathe. Om. Inhale.
And finally, yeah, listen through your mind and your ears passively hear. Yeah. It's like you're listening from afar, yeah, but close. So the more quiet the sound is produced, yeah, the more deep and penetrating yeah, the vibration gets inside the brain. Quiet, light touch, pleasing to the ears, and that's more penetrating actually. And listen, allow the sound to dissolve in your brain. So there are various sizes of the Tingsha bells. This one is quite large, about three and a half inches in diameter. And the large ones produce really loud, or not loud, but rich resonance. And the sound they emit lasts longer. So you have to wait you know, longer before you strike them again. All right. So smaller Tingsha bells, for example, this one. Yeah. Yeah around three inches in diameter, this one. So the sound they produce are quite high in frequency. Yeah, and then you might need a little bit more of that, I'd say force, yeah, but yeah, still keep, it, keep the intensity moderate and the gaps or the intervals are not as uh, long, yeah, as the bigger ones. So in here, yeah. Maybe one breath, one strike. Yeah. And he may also play the small tensha bells successively in uh, active intervals. Yeah. But keep the intensity or the striking force mild too. Sounds lovely, right? Don't hit them hard. Yeah. Notice how my less active hand doesn't move. And then I'm just using my dominant hand, the dominant bell, yeah, and touching them. Good. Relax. Good. So you can do that when you're playing the smaller size, but for the bigger sizes, such as this, yeah, you have to wait. Yeah, you don't want to be playing them yeah, too fast, too soon. Good. So the tools to meditation are, I say, supportive uh, techniques only. Uh, I have to emphasize that our uh, organic vibrations are uh, much more, I'd say, profound, meaningful, and powerful. There are hundreds or even thousands of times yeah, more um, meditative than the external tools. But the external tools are a good way for us to break free, to take a break from our energetic practices, yeah, and they really help us, especially, for example, if you're a teacher, um, this happens to me yeah, if I'm writing my lessons and I can't find inspiration. I will get up, yeah, go outside, find colors, and yeah, normally I would you know, do a short round of the tincture bells. Sometimes I would use the the bowl, yeah, 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 and the sound they produce, yeah. Um, are similar to the nada. So the nada is the subtle sound vibration our brain emits, our inner body emits during deep meditative states. So the nada, depending on the frequency, yeah, they, up, uh, I say, stimulate you know, the production of the alpha, theta, and even the delta brain waves. So these three brain waves promote better sleep, restoration, yeah, and the promotion of memory, yeah, and the processing of the information. Yeah. So these are adjunctive tools, help, helpful, I'd say, instruments yeah, for us to 
uh, enhance our experience or even our teaching. You know, so, for example, if you're teaching a meditation class, another meditation class, and you just want your students to relax, yeah, you might play these instruments as you walk around. Yeah, and yeah, so this will help you yeah, give your students, uh, I say, memorable experience. Yeah, good. And yeah, they're relaxing, really. Um, for me, um, Sometimes we need to break free or take breaks from our energetic and physical practices, asana, pranayama, or even intense meditation. Just yeah, allow our minds to just relax yeah, and listen to nature. It's important. Yeah. Yeah. And then come close to our yeah, inner subtle uh, entities. Yeah, they are ever present. Yeah, they're not lost. Yeah, they're not cultivated. Yeah, you just have to be mindful of the things you do. Yeah, and observe. Yeah, observation is one helpful way for us to understand uh, the the subtleness of. Uh, physical, energetic, astral, and spiritual sides. Yeah. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a meaningful one. Namaste.